Welcome back, everybody. I'm glad you're joining me for another episode of Putting on the Whole Armor of God. And today we are speaking with Michael here, and he is going to, you know, lead us in, this, or I'm leading us in a discussion, and how Christians should uh, prepare for the month that we're in with the celebration of self all over us. It's being bombarded uh, left and right, and how we, we should react and how we should um, head out into the world with that. So, uh, here speaking with Michael today. Welcome. Thank you for joining hey, me today. Excited to be here, man. Yeah. This awesome. Fun. Awesome. Really well, fun. Um, you know, this month is a month where uh, things intensify uh, <laughs> all around. It, you can't escape it. Right. Um, and it's a it's a bombardment on, you know, the Christian faith, basically right. what it boils down to, I believe. And, you know, we, we see this happening and it intensifies every year, I think. Mm. And you know, with that being said, before we dive into, you know, how we're going to grapple with that, uh, let me ask you a couple things, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe share a little bit of your testimony. Yeah. So Michael Hornback and um, I have, I've been pastoring for several years now. I'm a, a chaplain in the Florida Army National Guard. Um, but I, I, you know, I was by the grace of God, I was raised in a, a, a by Christian parents. I, say, I was going to say raised in a Christian home. Right. But but you, you know, you know that 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 uh, being born in born to Christian parents doesn't make you a Christian yourself, right? I don't know, that, so I'm not sure that's helpful language. But anyway, I was born to Christian parents um, by the grace of God. Um, they were they were saved later on in 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 life, later on in their teenage years, but before I came onto this onto the scene, and um, and and raised me in the fear and admonition of the Lord, you know, as Proverbs says, and. Um, dad, later on, dad became a, became a pastor. So not only was I, was I, uh, born to Christian parents, but, uh, I was literally raised in the church. Um, but I'll tell you what, even, even at, at seven, at seven years old at Grace Baptist Church in Evansville, Indiana, um, I, I came to faith in the Lord. And even as a seven year old Michael, I, I realized that I was, I was a sinner. Um, and that that my because of my sin, I deserved uh, I deserved eternal punishment in in hell. And uh, fortunately, my parents had done a good job. They, I knew exactly what needed to happen. I needed to trust in Jesus Christ as my crucified and risen Lord. Um, and that's that's what I did. And and He saved me. And like I said, my dad grew up. Or I, my dad was a pastor when I was growing up. And so I I I if 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 you'd asked me if I was going to be a pastor. Uh, younger, even, even in college, right. When I first started college, I said, absolutely not. You know, I, in some ways, looking back on it now, it was kind of like Jonah fleeing to Tarshish, <laughs> you know, because, um, God was calling me into pastoral ministry. I didn't, didn't realize it until I was a senior or about junior, probably in college, uh, my third year in college when I, when I realized, realized that and the Lord called me into ministry and here I am, I've been pastoring now for about 16 years and I love it. And I just love, love making disciples and that's what I do. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that with yeah. us and and really setting the stage because you know you're 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 very familiar with the book of Ephesians and mm -hmm. you know Paul's letters to the churches and preparing mm -hmm. them, you know, preparing the saints for uh, you know what we've been called to do. Mm -hmm. And you know, as 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 Christians um, that are living in the 21st century, mm -hmm. um, and many there's many instances that's pretty reflective of still first century that some of the stuff they still had to go through. You know, we're still facing that same stuff here. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul, you know, there's a passage in in, uh, in Ephesians chapter six, starting there in verse ten, where uh, he lays out the armor of God mm -hmm. and what that looks like for a believer. Mm -hmm. um, as we're in this battle, the spiritual warfare that we are currently in um, as believers. You know, what does that mean for believers today? What does that mean, putting on the armor of God? Well, I, I mean, I, I think I think first it it means that we have to understand that that we're not fighting against flesh and blood. Right. Well, you gotta start there. But so I we're in a we're in a war, mm -hmm. right? The armor means we're in a war. But but like with any enemy, you got to get the enemy right, right? Who are you fighting? And um, the 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 weapons of our warfare are are to to quote Paul in a, in, in Second Corinthians, right? The weapons of our warfare um, have are are divine in nature. 
because because the 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 enemy that we fight is spiritual <laughs> in nature primarily. And so I think you've got to get that right first, right? Right. That that we're not fighting against people, we're fighting against Satan. We're fighting against his forces. We're fighting against the schemes of the devil, to use Paul's language there uh, in Ephesians chapter six. And then understanding that that we need we need armor, right? <laughs> right? We 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 are not self sufficient. We can't do this on their on our own. We need we need armor. And when you think about it, that that armor really, I mean, it all boils down to. I mean, um, you know, it, it lists these these different aspects of what that armor is. But but really, it all boils down to and builds on top of the fact that we are we need the word of God. We need the word of God, um, and then ending with with prayer, right? To to be praying at all times, staying alert, right? And so I think I think we got to get the arm the the enemy right. We have to understand that we're in a, in a battle, but get the enemy right. We understand we can't do it on our own. We're in, we we need God's armor, mm -hmm. right? Um, and and that that ultimately comes from um, being people of the word, of, of the Bible, right? So I mean by the word, the Bible, that what I believe is the inspired and errant infallible word of God, the Bible, and and being people of prayer. Right, you bring up an interesting point. You say, you know, uh, you know, armor, it's for warfare, right? So mm -hmm. in other words, you're a soldier. Mm -hmm. a as a soldier, you, you, you run these drills to stay prepared, correct? Mm -hmm. We do. Yeah. And that should apply in a Christian life as well. We should mm -hmm. be running drills by being in Scripture consistently mm -hmm. and, of course, in prayer. But not only just in Scripture, we should also not forsake uh, ourselves to be assembling with other believers. Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Well, I, I, the, I was going to say the, the, you know, the army, in the army, they train you, train or teach you to train as you fight. Train right. as you fight. Train as you fight. Because you're going to fight like you train. Right. right. So train as you fight. And so 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 what that what that means is that we're training as we're going through army warrior tasks and things like that. Um, uh, the they, they want you to be training as if it's a real battle. Mm -hmm. Right now, I, I would I, I'm not I, I'm not sure how helpful that is. Right. Okay. In the spiritual context, because the reality is we're never training. Right. To, to some extent. I mean, yeah, we're. We're, we're always engaged in battle. Like there's, there's never, there's never a point, you know, in, in, in a military con conflict, right. You've got, you've got units, you've got multiple units. So those units are deploying in different ways. Um, but, but you'll have a period where a unit's training up for a deployment, right. That's mm -hmm. not, that, that never happens in the spiritual life. Right. <laughs> so which why Paul says always be alert. Right. Mm -hmm. Because there's, I guess it, to some extent, there's really no such thing as training. Yeah, it's always warfare. Um, it's constant warfare. It's it's we're 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 always having to be alert. We're always having to be on our guard. We're always having to 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 be in the Word and in prayer and and practicing our personal spiritual disciplines um, with a mind that this isn't just training for something. This is the something, mm -hmm. right? This is the conflict, and that's how we're going to win. Yeah, a very good point. Yeah, you're we're just kind of, you know, mm -hmm. once you're in, you know, the battle is raging around us. And even mm -hmm. if we're not in the battle is still raging around, you know, regardless. Right. So now, you're on one side of the, you're always on one side of the conflict or another, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Regardless of whether you're saved or not. Yeah. So you, you know, the spiritual yeah. warfare is non season. Right. Right. So yeah, no, that's excellent points. And and as mm -hmm. a as a believer, um, you know, a lot well, the spiritual warfare tends to happen a lot in our minds, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's an uh, entry point right there is, is right. a lot of times uh, in our minds. And, you know, as as uh, as believers, and especially in the world that we are in today, you know, Paul didn't have social media back in the day, you know, if you <laughs> had to send something, it was going to take a couple of weeks before it got right. to where it needed to get. Now we have instantaneous um, information. Mm -hmm. how, how do Christian? how should Christians today absorb that and deal with that? You mean the on the constant it's, onslaught yeah. of messages that we get from our culture that are quite often not holy messages? Absolutely. Um, Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse uh, three through five, I think. Right? He says he talks about having you know we 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 wage war or our, or our weapons have divine power to tear down strongholds. Right? But then he says he says he says 
the way in which we wage war, I'm paraphrasing some, but basically says the way in which we wage war is by taking every thought captive to obedience to Christ, right? Yeah. And that, that, that's it. Now, we're going to need our armor that we we're talking about in Ephesians 6 to, yeah. in order to do that. But, but that's, that's the idea. And, and yeah, and I don't, you know, I mean, obviously you needed to take every thought captive 2000 years ago when Paul was writing second Corinthians. Right. Right. Yeah. But, and so I, I guess I'm hesitant to, to say that we need it more now than we, than they did then. Okay. But I don't know. I mean, you're right. I mean, the, the onslaught of, of that of of unholy and unhelpful thoughts that social media and tv or advertising or whatever whatever it is right that are almost always <laughs> playing on the worst side of who we are yeah if 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 we don't need it more than we used to man it, it certainly does seem harder right yeah then then it wants then it once maybe was um uh it, it, certainly in the United States, maybe not Paul's day, you know, I mean, I mean, in the first century Greco Roman world, I mean, I mean, there, there was, I mean, the, the, the way in which they, they worshiped the pagan gods was all over the place. And so, you know, it wasn't social media, but you know, you were having to pass at the streets every day. And, right. and so, I, I mean, I, I think, I think sometimes we, I, I might be going a rabbit trail here, but I think this is important to the question. And I think sometimes we, we look at, the Bible, especially the New Testament, we go, well, this is written 2000 years ago um, or a little less than 2000 years ago and in some cases and, and, and go, well, there's no way they, that's relevant for us. But reality, Paul's world. Yes, you're right. They didn't have social media and things took a lot longer to get, but it, Paul's world really wasn't that different from 21st century America in a lot of ways. Yeah. And, and, but that's it back to the point that, that we're making is every thought captive. Right, we, you, we have to be constantly aware of the thoughts that we're allowing to entertain, um, or, or, or ourselves allowing ourselves to entertain, making sure that we're placing unholy or unhelpful thoughts with with the Word of God, which means we need to have the armor, yeah. right? Um, that we're replacing that with with the Word of God, and constantly depending upon the Lord in in prayer. Um, in in order to be able to do that, but you're right. It's 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 in the mind, and that means we have to. That means maybe I need to take a hiatus from Facebook or or whatever social media platform I use, or maybe it means maybe it means I need to not not be watching news for a little while, or maybe right. whatever it whatever it is that really leads me towards these unhelpful thoughts, so that I can get control of my thought life, and I can begin replacing unhelpful, unholy thoughts with 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 thoughts that that honor honor the Lord. Um, but, but I mean, you could, you, you know, you think of, of, um, Ephesians six, a lot of that, you know, is, is really thought related. Yeah. Um, second Corinthians chapter five, a lot of that's thought related. Um, sec, uh, Romans chapter 12, right. It was yeah. talk about live being a living sacrifice, right. Yeah. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing, the renewing of, your, of mind. your mind. That's right. And so, yeah, that's how we do it. Yeah. You touched on an important point there that I think, um, many times that I think we, we as Christians and generally uh, like to gloss over is obedience, obedient. You know, if you're in the military, there is a chain of command. There mm -hmm. is, Hey, this is what we got to do. This is the plan. This is how we execute it. And mm -hmm. you obey that plan. Mm -hmm. God has laid out our plan that he has for us. Mm -hmm. It's pretty clear in scripture. Mm -hmm. How important that is that for believers to, to really grab hold onto obedience and saying, yes, Lord, you are my, you are my master. I'm going to follow you no matter what the consequences are over here, because you, you have a plan for my life. Why, why do you think that Christians tend to kind of struggle with that obedience portion of it? Be, because I want to be my own Lord. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is really is the root of sin, right? I mean <laughs> that, you know, it's, it's uh, what, what, did, what did, what is, what did it say in Genesis chapter three, right? Eve, Eve, Eve looked at, the fruit and saw that it was, it was pleasing, you know, yes. saw that it was, it would make her wise. She, she, you know, the Satan played into her desire to serve herself. And, and, and that's what Satan's been doing ever since. 
right? He's been playing into our desire for self-lordship, our desire to control our own destiny, our desire to please ourself. And that's why it's so hard. And we come to faith in Jesus Christ. And the reality is we still, in this side of heaven, we still have, have that, that, that tendency to desire self-lordship. And, and in, unless we deal with that, I mean, it's, it's vital, right? Because unless we deal with that aspect, we can't come to Christ, right? Because, because I, I think, I think too often in 21st century America, especially in the, in the West, we, we've been sold this version of Jesus that allows me to believe certain things about Jesus. He died for my sins. He rose from the dead. He's coming back again. Well, while at the same time, not, not giving, not having to give up my self lordship yeah. for his lordship. Right. But what did he say? He said, if anyone would come after me, let him take up his cross, deny himself daily, take up his cross and, yeah. and follow me. Right. If, if anyone would do that, come after me, they must do this. Essentially is what he's saying. What do he say in the great commission? Right. He says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the father and the son and the Holy spirit, teaching them to observe. He doesn't just mean see that it's there. Right. He means right. actually live it out. Observe all that I've commanded you. Right. When he says, when he says that, that the kingdom of God is like a child, if you want to, it, it, it belongs to children. If you, if you want to, to, to come in, enter into the kingdom of God, you must become like a child. He's saying you must understand your dependence um, upon my path and my way for your life. And so it's vital, but it's tough because, because that's, that's, that is the battle, right? That's, mm -hmm. that is the scheme that Satan wants to use over and over and over again and say, convince us that, no, if you would just take control of your own life, you'll be happier. Yeah. God's trying to keep something good from you. He's trying, he, he tries to, to get us to believe. Right? right. And so you just need to uh, re abandon that way and seek this thing, eat off of this thing and, 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 and your life will be better. Mm -hmm. Except it won't. No. Uh -huh. Because because while while Jesus does demand obedience from us, the benevolence of this God that we serve, right? Obedience to Jesus always leads us to life. Yeah. Whereas obedience to ourselves is always going to lead us to death. Yeah, that's that's real good right there. Yeah. You know, and you know this. You know, speaking of the the targeting and and the, and the messages that get pushed on to society. They're really mm -hmm. focused in on a certain demographic, and that demographic is our youth. Mm -hmm. And you know, we have a lot of you know believers who are youth and things like that. And how do they grapple with this with this type of messaging that's being pushed onto them daily? Yeah, I mean, I I would go younger though, and maybe that's what you mean by youth. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think youth. I think like teenagers. Mm -hmm. You know, preteens. Yep. Um, but but I I mean I think I mean I. I think Satan wants to get our kids as young as he can get them. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I think, I think those, those who are, who are trying to foist or trying to, trying to change culture um, into a way that doesn't reflect God's design, understand that, that, that you have to get kids as young as you can. Yeah. Um, because, because the younger, uh, children are the the well I, I mean the more susceptible they are to indoctrination i guess mm -hmm. but certainly if you can get them young then you've got them for life and we we say the same thing in evangelism right right if you if you can if you can save the kids if you can save the kids right it's a whole lot easier to save them at at at, at seven or eight or nine or ten than it is is at 18 there's just so much to overcome at point. not impossible right you know that yeah but um but 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 man if it, it, and you're going to save them from so much heartache down the road. Um, but the, the world that the world knows that too, mm -hmm. right? Satan, his forces know that too. Um, and so we do. And so I, I think, I think it, it, it emphasizes the importance of, of parents teaching their kids the way they ought to go. Yeah. Right. I mean, you think, God knows what he's doing, right? Yeah. Deuteronomy chapter six, where he, he tells the nation of Israel, here's the law. Here's my words. Here's my commandments. Now teach these diligently to your kids, like all the time, right? Just teach it all the time. And so what that means for us as parents, 
preparing our youth, preparing our kids. I know you had, your question was about youth, yeah. But, but if, no, I think we got to start with parents, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And and so as parents who are followers of Jesus Christ, right? Part of the problem is is that that in American Christianity, because it's so easy to be a Christian or claim to be a Christian in the United States, right? If we were living in places where Christianity was Christians were being persecuted, mm -hmm. like really persecuted, then then, um, I mean, man, to say you follow Jesus, I mean, it could mean imprisonment. It could mean your life. You don't, pe people are, are less likely to do that without counting, counting the costs, right? right? But here in the United States, where it's so easy to, to, to claim to be a follower of Jesus Christ, um, Christianity just kind of becomes its accessory or one of the many things that we do. And so we take them to church, we do, but, but that's not the kind of discipleship for, of our children that Deuteronomy 6 presents, right? No. Which is this laying, walking, you know, sleeping, awake, you know, just ev all the time, day in, day out, as a matter of life, I am, I am taking the word of God and I am teaching my children the word of God. And we're understanding this, his design for their lives. And we're understanding his design for their gender. And we're understanding his design for who they're to marry. And we're understanding his why it matters to go to church. And we're understanding, you know, I mean, so it's just, this foundation of we're in as as a family we're in the word and we're following the lord and it's not just something we do a few times a week or a few hours a week this is what we do as a matter of life and setting that foundation and that foundation uh, uh, or, or setting that foundation for them that's rooted in a commitment to the authority of the word of god because because we're committed to the authority of god himself right that's what's necessary to live the christian life and hand in hand with that that's what's necessary to survive the onslaught yes. of the schemes of the devil that are so often aimed at our children and more so today than I think they were when you and I were kids. Yeah. Right. Now, the answer is the answer is the same, right, for mm -hmm. the kids themselves as it is for the parents. Right. Yeah. That foundation of understanding what it means to follow Jesus Christ, uh, having having that understanding informed by commitment to the word of God, because you're committed to the authority of God. Um, and, and then, and then being willing to live that out, no matter the cost um, is, is kind of, is kind of key. And I think, I think kind of hand in hand with that understanding that, that this is, that this life is not the best there is. Right. Understanding that this life is is just preparation for something better and and for a joy that is more full and for a glory that is yet to be revealed understanding that right then enables you to pay the cost because mm -hmm. there is a cost if you really want to follow Jesus we're not we are not helping our youth by 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 presenting to them a faith that is all roses and butterflies right right we are not helping our youth that way. In order to help our youth, we have to help them count the cost, which is what Jesus did, right? That's why he said, if anyone will come after me, he must deny himself daily, take up his cross and follow me, right? right. Um, helping them count the cost and say, hey, there's a cost to truly following Jesus. It may, and, 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 and you're going to pay that cost um, as, as culture rages against the gospel that you're proclaiming and the gospel that you're living. Um, but it's okay because the cost is worth it. Like in the end, what we, what well, the, the reward is worth the cost. So helping them understand that, making sure that we're laying a foundation, um, that sets them up for success, spiritually speaking, right? That's how we do it. Yeah. A couple yeah. more questions as we, sure. uh, as we're rolling here is, you know, <clears throat> uh, throughout the ages, they, they've worked to, to, to quiet Christians down. Hey, don't speak. We don't want to hear, you know, mm -hmm. about your Jesus. Keep it out of schools. Keep it out of the public square. Yeah. During this time that we're kind of going, that we are going through right now, how important is, is it still to go ahead and share that gospel, no matter the cost? Well, it's essential. I mean, right. it's, it's, that's what we have to do. And, and this is, this is something, this is something that, um, I mean, let me back up for a minute and say, that's the mission. Yes. Right. That's, that's the mission. Um, all authority has been given and, and the great commission is a great place to go. Right. 
because um, keeping in mind the Great Commission is not just an evangelistic text, but also discipleship text. But it's it's both, right? And and how does the Great the Great Commission doesn't really begin with go. It begins with Jesus saying, "All authority has been given." Right. Right. He says, "All authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Go, therefore." Right. Because yeah. that's true. Go. Mm -hmm. Right. Go, therefore, and uh, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I've commanded with commanded you. And then he ends with, "And I am with you." Even the the one, so you got kind of that that parenthetical statement. It's all about Jesus, right? Yeah. Um, you know, you the the one to whom all authority has been given is giving us this command, and as he's giving us this command, he's going to be with us, right? And he had to tell them that. He had to tell them that because because he knew what they were going to face, right? Right. He knew what they were going to face. Um, it, immediately as they start proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. Right, the 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 powers and the principalities began waging war against them, using people to to do that. Right, um, they're brought before the in uh, it's it's Acts four, I think, yes. when they're brought before the Sanhedrin. Yes, right, and and told not to spread the gospel and and beaten for it. <laughs> right, and there's Acts chapter six and seven, I believe, when um when when um Stephen is arrested and stoned to death. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, John spends a good amount of time imprisoned on the island of Patmos. Uh, right. We believe he was bo boiled in oil, but survived. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, by by the grace of God. Um, Paul spends a good amount of his time in prisons and is eventually beheaded. You know, Peter, uh, church, church tradition tells us, uh, was most likely crucified upside down. Right. right. For for his faith. Right. So this is this is what they were facing. And, but it's in all that that Paul says go, yeah, or that Jesus says go, and it's in all that that Paul continues to affirm that, and that that the apostles continue from. This is what we've been called to do. We've been called to make disciples. We've been called to reach people with the good news of Jesus Christ. This is the mission, and it doesn't become the mission. Uh, it isn't. It isn't. It doesn't um, uh, stop being the mission um, when things get hard. As a matter of fact, what we see is as often. If God's people are committed to, to him and they're committed to the mission, they're committed to being faithful to Jesus Christ and to doing the things that God has called them to do, the harder it gets, the more powerful their witness becomes, and the more people come to faith in Jesus Christ. The more people try to stop God's faithful people from being who he's called them to be, the more they just cause the gospel to spread. Yeah. So. You know, uh, with all that being said, with everything that we, we've seen, you know, using the armor, going out and spreading the gospel still, you know, in a very hostile environment mm -hmm. that we see, because it's not getting any easier. It will not become more easier. It's going to continue to get harder. Indeed. Um, what's your message to believers out there that may still be struggling with that notion of, of hey, sh you know, I can't stand for my faith for whatever reason, maybe you know, I'll be frowned at work at, or I'll be made fun of at school or, or things like that. What, what would you tell them? Stand firm. Um, you can do it. Um, the great commission is clear. Um, if, if you, if you have trust in Jesus Christ as a crucified and risen Lord, um, you have the power of the Holy spirit at work within you and Jesus is with you. And all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Jesus. And, and so, so no matter what we face, because we have the power of the Spirit at work within us, because we have the, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, uh, with us uh, in, the, in accomplishing the mission that he's called us to accomplish, we can do it if... We love him more than we love ourselves and our comforts, right? We have to do that. We have to love him more than we love ourselves and our comforts. We have to deny ourselves. And if we are in the word and diligent in prayer, so we're so we're cladding ourselves with the armor armor of God um, and then faithfully and courageously obeying him, we can do it. And I, I, I really believe that this is an exciting time. Yes. 
to be a Christian in the United States of America. It's a scary time. It is a, uh, a moment uh, where, where things are progressively becoming more uncomfortable, eventually maybe more dangerous. But it's also really exciting if we value the kingdom more than we value our own lives, our own comfort, because the more the I, I, I've already said this, but I think it's worth saying again: the <laughs> more faithful we are in those moments, the more God's going to use us powerfully to accomplish the work of the kingdom, and that's what I want. I mean, I don't, I, I don't, I don't primarily want comfort. I, I want. I don't say this in a self-aggrandizing aggrandizing way. I don't. I don't mean that that way. I just, I, I just, I'm, I'm really excited about the idea of God using me for eternal purposes. I'm just really excited about the idea of God, God using me for the work of the kingdom. And, and so I'm kind of excited about where we're at in this, in, in the United States. It's scary. Yes. I'm not diminishing that. It's scary for me too. Um, it's uncomfortable in some ways. I, it really is, but man, it's also exciting because I think God's going to, do great things. So if we just keep focused on that and remain strong, remain faithful, remain in the word, remain in prayer, we can do it. It'll be good. Yeah, absolutely. I know you touched on this a little bit at the very beginning um, as you were doing, uh, you know, introducing yourself to us mm -hmm. and sharing a little bit of your testimony. But for those unbelievers out there that are watching this and are like, there, he's like, where are these Christians talking about hope? And then mm -hmm. have you looked around? Look what's going on. We're almost on the precipice of World War III. And they're over here talking about hope. Mm hmm. Can you elaborate to that unbeliever what that hope we have and and why it's so important? Yeah. Um, I <laughs> I know as well as anybody um, that that we live in a seemingly chaotic world and in in a scary moment. Um, but at the same time, as, as believers in Jesus Christ, as followers of Jesus Christ, um, we, we know that this world isn't all there is. And that this life isn't all there is. Right? We, we, we know that... Um, that that there is a creator of the universe who has sent his son Jesus Christ to die for our sins and if we trust in him then we have eternal life we hope have 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 forgiveness of our sins now we have transformation now progressively but we have the hope of eternity and uh, so no matter how how bad this life gets Nothing is going to change that, right? God is on his throne. Um, as chaotic as it seems, as chaotic as it seems, I, I know that God is in control. And while I don't understand how he exercises that control, I don't all the, it, it, in its entirety. I trust that he's good. And I know that he's good. And that as he's exercising that control, he's bringing everything ultimately to a good end, which is for the believer, it's a good end. The return of Jesus Christ um, to to usher in the new heavens and the earth, new earth to rule and to reign, and I'm looking forward to being with Him for the rest of eternity. Yes. And knowing that gives me hope, um, no matter no matter what happens around me. Yeah, I appreciate your time that you've mm -hmm. given us today, and and be uh, you know top you know touching all these different topics and mm -hmm. and sharing you know you know the 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 hope which is in Jesus Christ uh, with uh, people that are watching today and tomorrow and mm -hmm. who, who knows when. Um, and I, I thank you for that. Uh, so, um, you know, just make sure you guys, uh, you know, hit that like button, subscribe button. And I look forward to doing more of these uh, sit downs and hopefully I'll have a, more opportunities to maybe bring Michael back and, mm -hmm. and talk about different topics uh, uh, pertaining to, uh, to scripture and to how we can apply that as believers. But um, I just want to encourage you today, especially if you're a believer, to continue to be in Scripture, continue to be in prayer, and mm -hmm. most of all, continue to, uh, you know, if you haven't found that church, keep keep looking for that church, because we don't want to deny ourselves to 
um, not be around other like-minded believers because it's more important now than ever uh, to be around each other. So with that being said, we'll see you guys a little bit later. Thank you for joining us. Have a great and wonderful day.